Hello everybody, welcome to this fresh new lecture in which we are going to learn the nervous system, their contributions, how they have evolved across different animal phyla, how the nervous system is formed developmentally, which are the key molecules in this development. Just imagine a cell that has lost its ability to divide like other normal body cells. That means they cannot be replaced if they die. These peculiar properties make these cells invaluable and priceless. These cells are called neurons which control your body at every step of its action and sanction. Just think about it. If we look at the number, there are 100,000 neurons in fruit flies, 75 million neurons in mouse, 50 million neurons in cats, 7 billion neurons in chimpanzee, 57 billion neurons in elephants and finally 100 billion neurons in humans. How these changes accommodate their skill and task abilities in decision making? Let's see few interesting facts about nervous system. You must be knowing all or few of them. Have you ever thought that a newborn baby who had double the number of neurons before they are born? There are 100 billion neurons in your brain alone and about 13,50,000 neurons in the human spinal cord. A man's brain has 6.5 times more grey matter compared to a female. But a female's brain has 10 times more white matter compared to a male. Do you know why? The study shows female having more white matter and male having more grey matter related to their intellectual skills revealing that no single neuroanatomical structure determines a general intelligence and that different types of brain designs are capable of producing equivalent intellectual performances. According to Rex Jong, grey matter represents information processing centers in the brain and the white matter represents the networking of or the connections between these processing centers. So men tend to excel in tasks requiring more local processing like mathematics while females tend to excel at integrating and assimilating information from distributed grey matter regions of the brain, such as required for language facility, etc. These two very different neurological pathways and activity centers have a result in the equivalent overall performances on broad measures of cognitive abilities such as those found in intelligence tests. The left side of human brain controls the right side of the body and the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. This is called the contralateral operation of brain. Just think how and why so. This is due to the crossing of nerve fibers in the brain and spinal cord that cross from left side to the right side. For example, motor nerves leaving the brain on the left side will cross from one side to the other in the spinal cord so that when they leave the spinal cord they flow out to the muscles on the opposite side of the body. The nervous system can transmit nerve impulses as fast as 431 km per hour. The insulated fibers make this to happen very fast. But even this top speed is 3 million times slower than the speed of the electricity through a wire. What to do with it? You are just 6 feet tall? And that's enough. Just kidding. The nervous system has originated from ectoderm. It is composed of neurons and glia cells. Don't think that the brain is made up of only these two cells. There are other cells like endothelial cells, blood cells, adipocytes, etc. There are 43 pairs of peripheral nerves out of which 12 pairs are cranial nerves related to brain and 31 pairs spinal nerves which are related to your spinal cord which we will see in later lectures. I don't know a single whole of function which doesn't involve the neurons. The five senses such as touch, smell, hearing, sight and smell all are controlled by the nervous system. For that first function the brain uses more than 20% of the body's total energy production. Yet it's true. So now let's see the nervous system organization in different animal phyla. So starting with the first multicellular phylum which is called a porifera, there is no tissue like things of neurons in sponges. So let's see about Nidaria or your cilantrata. 
they have the nerve nets which is one of the best examples of a diffuse nervous system this plexus of nerve cells occur both at the base of the epidermis and at the base of the gastrodermis forming two interconnected nerve nets nerve processes like axons end on the nerve cells at synapses with sensory cells or effector organ like uh, nematocytes or epithelial muscular cells another peculiarity of nidarians is the absence of any insulating material or the myelins on the axons nidarians don't have a local concentration of nerve cells that would approximate the central nervous system however some have argued that the nerve net and the ring system in nidaria medusa is as effective as a central nervous system when processing and responding to stimuli arriving from different directions so coming to platyhelminthes or the flatworms the phylum platyhelminthes have both a central nervous system made up of small brain and two nerve cords and a peripheral nervous system containing a system of nerves that extend throughout the body so coming to askhelminthes or nemathelminthes or the roundworms all nematode nervous system exhibits a number of common invariant features the central nervous system consists primarily of so called circumeral brain or nerve ring consisting of annular neuropil that encircle the neck of the pharyngeal muscle it is composed largely of the axonal and dendritic processes of the neurons called the ganglia whose cell bodies lie in bundles positioned anterior and posterior to the nerve ring all nematodes have a major nerve cord running longitudinally along the mid- ventral midline of the body from head to tail so coming to annelida the nervous system in earthworms consists of central system and peripheral nerves the central system reflects the typical annelidal pattern which is uh, a pair of cerebral ganglia or the brain above the pharynx a pair of connectives passing around the pharynx connecting the brain with the first pair of the ganglia in the nerve cord a solid ventral nerve cord really the number is double running along the floor of the cilium to the last segment and a pair of fused ganglia on the nerve cord in each segment neurosecretory cells have been found in the brain and the ganglia both oligochaetes and polychaetes of annelida they are endocrine in function and secret neurohormones concerned with the regulation of reproduction secondary sexual characters and regeneration they have giant axons so now come to arthropoda the insect nervous system is more complex but also fairly decentralized it contains a brain ventral nerve cord and ganglia which are the clusters of connected neurons these ganglia can control movements and behaviors without the input from the brain now come to mollusca the nervous system of mollusca consists of several pairs of ganglia with connecting nerve cords and it is generally simpler than that of annelids and arthropods the nervous system contains neurosecretory cells that at least in certain air breathing snails produce a growth hormone and functions in osmoregulation there are various types of highly specialized sense organs octopus may have the most complicated of the invertebrate nervous systems they have neurons that are organized in special lobes and eyes that are structurally similar to that of vertebrate species that's why they are so smart so now come to echinodermata echinoderms don't have a brain or distant ganglia the nervous system consists of three units lying within the discs and arms there is an oral or ectoneural system composed of nerve ring around the mouth and a main radial nerve into each arm it appears to coordinate the tube feet a deep hyponeural system lies aboral to the oral system and an aboral system consists of a ring around the anus and radial nerves along the roof of each ray now come to phylum hemichordata their nervous system comprises a sub epithelial nerve plexus and fibers to which processes of epithelial cells are attached thickening of this net 
from dorsal and ventral knob cords that are united posterior to the cola by a ring connective the dorsal rod continues into the cola and furnishes many fibers to plexus of the proboscis the dorsal knob cord or the neurocord is formed by an invagination of the ectoderm and is hollow in some species this is how there is similarity with cordates one interesting difference between the nervous system of invertebrates and vertebrates is that the knob cords of many invertebrates are located ventrally whereas the vertebrate spinal cord are located dorsally so in the phylum chordata the knob cord is hollow and dorsal there is distinct three lobed brain present in vertebrates so this was all about the nervous system complexity and history in different phyla let's learn how the nervous system has developed in humans more specifically during gastrulation three germ layers are formed which are endoderm mesoderm and ectoderm the vertebrate ectoderm has three major responsibilities forming three different tissues one part of this germ layer will become the epidermis which is the outer layer of skin another part of the ectoderm will become the neural tube the precursor of central nervous system the brain and spinal cord between the compartments forming the epidermis and the central nervous system lie the presumptive neural crest cells these crest cells will generate the peripheral nervous systems and the pigment cells how the epidermis decides what it has to divide into the answer is notochord along with the primitive pit sends the inductive signals to the overlying ectoderm that causes a subset of neuroectodermal cells to differentiate into neural precursor cells let's see how <coughs> the midline ectoderm that contains these cells thicken into distinct columnar epithelial cells called the neural plate it is the first important step in the development of nervous system the plate is invaginated into neural groups the wall of these groups called the neural folds come together and fuse forming the neural tube the beads of the neural ectoderm are pinched off when the neural tube rolls up and these pinched off cells are called the neural crest cells forming the pns this process by which the neural plate becomes the neural tube is called the neurulation now the main story starts what is there in the neural tube and how the neural tissue differentiation takes place there are actually neural precursor cells in the neural tube these precursors are dividing neuronal stem cells that produce more precursors all with the capacity to give rise to neurons astrocytes and oligodendrocytes etc eventually subsets of these neural precursor cells will generate non dividing neuroblasts that differentiate into neuron another inductive signal from both the notochord and the fore plate lead to differentiation of the cells in the ventral portion of the neuronal tube that will eventually give rise to spinal and the hind brain motor neurons some cells at the elevated region of the edges of the folded neural plates are called the neuronal crest cells which migrate from the neuronal tube through loosely packed mesenchymal cells that fills the spaces between the neural tube embryonic epidermis and somites these crest cells give rise to variety of progeny including the neurons and glia of sensory and visceral motor ganglia the neurosecretory cells of the adrenal gland and the neurons of enteric nervous systems also some non neuronal structures like pigment cells phase cartilages etc are also derived from crest cells there are many proteins and factor that signal through a different cascades to execute this neurulation and knob differentiation processes let's see how the specification of the ectoderm is accomplished during gastrulation primarily by the regulating the levels of bmp or bone morphogenetic protein experienced by the ectodermal cells high levels of bmp specify the cells to become epidermis 
very low levels specify the cells to become neuronal plate intermediate levels affect the formation of neural crest cells neurulation directly follows gastrulation apart from bmps some other peptides are also essential for neural induction like sonic hedgehog major inductive signaling pathways of the vertebrate embryos include retinoic acid pathway fibroblast growth factor pathway vent pathway etc all this initially establishes the neural ectoderm layer and induces further differentiation of the neurons and glial cells the nervous system is divided into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system can be divided into brain and spinal cord peripheral nervous system is divided into autonomic and somatic nervous systems autonomic nervous system is sympathetic or it can be parasympathetic somatic system is of sensory or afferent type and motor or efferent type all these things we will cover in upcoming lectures till then tata bye bye and stay tuned if you like it